thank you. <laughs> um, uh, I'm Ander Gonzalez from, from the Basque Energy Cluster. Uh, I'm project manager of SEK uh, partnership. Uh, as you can see here, SECA, uh, which uh, takes its name from the European Sustainable Energy Cluster Partnership for Africa. Um, we, we are starting the webinar now, just a couple of things I wanted to make clear uh, before, the, before we start the webinar. Uh, please keep your camera off uh, at all moments just to avoid uh, background noises and background images. Um, if you want to ask a question at any point during this webinar, uh, please do it in the chat and we will answer them after the presentations. The webinar, as you may see now, uh, it will be recorded and will be accessible as well as with the presentations after the webinar. Um, today uh, we will uh, we have divided uh, this webinar um, in three main parts. Uh, I will give now a brief presentation of what SESECA. Uh, then um, the, the 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 company, the consultancy company that has developed the market reports uh, for the project uh, from these five countries: Senegal, Ghana, Kenya, Tanzania, and Rwanda will make a presentation of the um, of the mark of the market reports are the main results of these market reports that uh, we have developed in the first uh, steps of the, of the project and then in the end uh, we will have a couple of smes um, telling us the their experience in 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 some african countries okay so uh, starting with a seca um, as i said it's a it's an alliance it's a partnership of um, five different uh, cluster uh, associations in europe um, that come from uh, four different uh, countries uh, spain france um, germany and italy um, the Basque Energy Cluster, which uh, I, I'm part of the of the team, um, is the the, uh, the cluster leading the 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 alliance, and we gather in total uh, more than 500 organizations, which almost 300 of them are SMEs. The project started uh, in September 2021, and it uh, will. Um, well, during will be active during three years uh, and the basic objective of the project is to 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 position and to foster collaboration between Euro european companies and position these companies these smes um, in in the in the in the african energy markets of interest um, that are working on the on, on the development of uh, sustainable uh, renewable energy uh, sectors. So the main objective of the project could be divided in three parts uh, to intensify the business network collaboration among the among the uh, among the companies in, in Europe uh, with uh, in, in the sectors of renewable energies and smart grids uh, with the idea of uh, developing a, a, a joint internationalization strategy among the clusters and the, and the European companies to tackle and to, to go to uh, different sub-Saharan African markets, okay? So uh, basically how we will do that, uh, we will, uh, in, in this first uh, part, this first bullet of uh, network collaboration in Europe, uh, we will, try to foster um, clusters and SMEs collaboration. We will do that via uh, networking workshops, uh, surveys, uh, putting in contact companies, SMEs between them. Uh, that will be the, the main focus of the European collaboration. Then uh, with this uh, uh, network that we will create during the project that we are already creating really, um, we will uh, 
go uh, and develop the internationalization um, strategy plan. In this case, uh, we are already working on part of that. Uh, uh, this webinar and the development of the market reports are part of the of this internationalization strategy of, of ESECA. Uh, we have identified uh, key target markets in, in sub-Saharan Africa. And we will start now developing also activities there. We are preparing uh, exploratory trips to these countries. Uh, and after that, uh, uh, after making the contacts uh, there, uh, the idea is to develop also the future business missions, even a reverse mission from key African stakeholders to Europe. And as I said, business missions to, to these uh, target countries. These are the five that we have identified. Uh, we have uh, reached these five uh, countries after a, a, a very detailed analysis of first uh, a screening of 20 countries, then a high level analysis for, of other 10 countries um, in, in, in Africa. And then we have decided to, 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 to get to target uh, these five uh, countries. Um, as I said, we are working in, always in the sustainable energy sector. Uh, when we talk about sustainable energy in Africa, at least we are talking about distributed energy resources, smart grids, uh, then uh, in renewable energy, solar, wind, bioenergy, hydrogen, even energy storage also. Uh, and as part of Electrical equipment, also, we are considering digital solutions, softwares, innovative metering systems, uh, etc. These are the activities that uh, uh, some of them I was mentioning before. Um, uh, we have developed already the first two activities, as you can see in the first row the sub Saharan countries, the, the high level, 10 high level, well, a high level report of 10 sub Saharan countries. Uh, also five in-depth uh, uh, analysis that uh, we will present today, like a brief summary of these analysis. Um, uh, then uh, the exploratory chips that we are developing, that we are now uh, going to Kenya, Tanzania, and Senegal in this the next month, more or less. Um, the rest of activities that we will be developing during the project. Uh, as I said, the direct business missions, uh, a reverse mission from Africa, we will also organize three European networking events that I, I, I will, we will tell you about that uh, a, a bit more in detail later in the, in the webinar, okay? Uh, this is like a whole chronogram of what are we expecting. As I said, we are now in the in the in the in the frame of developing the exploratory trips, uh, we will organize. I will tell tell more about this later. Uh, the first European networking event in, in September in France, and this is us. Uh, this is the consortium. Uh, as I said, uh, the Basque Energy Cluster is the, the the coordinator, the leader of the project. Um, we, as a, as a Basque Energy Cluster, we are um, specialized in, in, in different energy sectors like uh, wind energy, solar energy. Uh, we have also an area of wave energy. Um, okay. Also more transverse area, areas like um, um, smart grids, um, energy storage, digitalization. Um, we are also focusing on hydrogen now uh, as another uh, area of expertise. We gather um, more than 190 companies in the Basque Energy Cluster uh, that work in those areas uh, from technology development, uh, pro in R&D projects uh, to internationalization. We support our companies and our SMEs in the, all those areas. Um, and, our, and, our, and our job, our, our intention with this project is to uh, congregate, to gather the, 
the companies that are interested in, in the African energy sector and to start collaborating with other companies that are, have interest in, in Africa from Europe and also, of course, to start collaborating with uh, companies um, in, in the African target markets. And now uh, in, in, I will give the floor to the, to the, the rest of my colleagues uh, to present briefly themselves as I have done now. Uh, so I will go maybe in order of uh, how it's uh, in the in the the proposal of the uh, in the proposal of the of, of ESECA. Uh, I will go in that order, and I think um, Mede, uh, Laura, or Anais. I don't know uh, if you want to present uh, your your cluster a bit. Yes. Uh, thank you, Ander. So I'm uh, Laura Bego. I'm from the MEDE cluster. So we are a cluster in electrical engineering. We are based in northern France, uh, in Lille. So we gather uh, companies from startups to large groups and uh, universities to do collaborative projects in research, uh, in development and innovation. So in electrical engineering. So we are targeting several uh, we have several target markets, so energy efficiency, renewable energies, uh, mobility, and smart grids. So that's, um, we were created uh, 10 year, around 10 years ago. And since 2017, we uh, developed our activities also in Africa. So we do the same services that we do as a cluster in the Northern France. And we uh, do this with African stakeholders we are uh, mostly active in uh, French-speaking countries in West Africa, but we are developing also with this project in East Africa. We uh, helped around uh, 30, uh, 35 projects in 14 different uh, countries from now. And um, as a last word, in this uh, precise uh, ESECA projects, we are in charge of the communication and the long-term strategy of the projects. Thank you. Laura, uh, now in the same order, I think uh, Lombardy Energy Clean Tech Cluster, uh, I don't know, Francesca yeah. or Carmen. Yeah, that would be me. So okay. good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Ander, um, for the introduction. Uh, good, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Francesca Lazzari, and I'm here today with the cluster manager, Cam Carmen Di Santo, and we represent the Lombardy Energy Clean Tech Cluster, in short, LE2C. Uh, we are... Uh, one of the nine uh, technology, uh, technological clusters uh, officially recognized by the Lombardy region, and we are based uh, in Milan. As, as our name kind of gives us easily away, we, our focus is on energy and clean tech. Um, we gather around 150 members from companies, from startups to big companies, um, energy uh, uh, research centers, uh, universities, and we have uh, several um, several uh, RFs that uh, we uh, that we cover with our activities. So, for example, smart energy systems, sustainable manufacturing, clean air, uh, water energy nexus, and of, of course, um, green building and cross-sectorial to all of them, uh, circular economy. Um, what we do is we support the innovation and uh, we promote the synergies among our members in order to improve uh, technology, technological innovation, and of course the growth of our associates. Um, we also do a lot of advocacy uh, activities at regional, uh, national, but also at European level. And uh, we also do, uh, as uh, with ZECA, uh, we support our members with the internationalization. Um, so now uh, with ZECA, we have extended our target market to Africa, but we also have another project in within interna uh, internationalization and the target markets are the United States and, and Canada. And we do think that these projects are very, very important uh, like to support our SMEs to international internationalize. So um, yeah, thank you for, for the attention and I'm there, back to you. Thank you. Uh, Francesca, 
Uh, the next one, uh, Meta Industry. I don't know if Silvia or Jose Ramon uh, will do the presentation of the cluster. It's going to be me. Thank Great. you, Ander. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Silvia Jimenez. I am part of the Meta Industry 4 cluster, the Advanced Manufacturing Metal Cluster in Asturias. We are located in a north region of, of Spain, a few kilometers away from the Basque Energy uh, Cluster. And we are a multidisciplinary cluster with more than 70 members. We were born in 2016, and since then, we have been working in mainly three areas, which are the, innov the innovation and digitalization of the sector, um, on the competitiveness skills for the um, metal workers, and also in, in global value chains. We are working right now in five main value chains, renewable energies, green a hydrogen, power electronics, and steel industry, and, and oil and gas. Regarding the sectors that are considering the SECA project, um, we have a lot of companies that work along the whole chain with, multi, with multinational, with more, more, the, more than uh, SMEs, but all of them working on that area. And as a cluster, what we offer is a highly group of specialized companies and that the sum of the capabilities and level of expertise allow us to, to offer a wide range of, of services and integrant solutions to, to a demanding market. Some of our companies are uh, right now working on, on the African markets and what we have want to do is go in as a cluster to those markets and you know, for what uh, we can do from, from our studios. Um, uh, last but not least, uh, Peter uh, from the from Cluster Power Electronics in Germany. Yes, hello, everybody. My name is Peter Echberger. I'm presenting uh, not only the Cluster Power Electronics in Bavaria, but also a European network for power electronics. So power electronics is in all the applications mentioned before, and uh, normally we have like three main uh, focus points. Uh, the first is pre-competitive research uh, among our members and the, uh, the coming from uh, small uh, SMEs, uh, large companies, uh, research centers and universities. The second pillar is uh, training and uh, education. So we uh, organize a lot of um, um, trainings for all aspects of power electronics from materials to uh, software to uh, thermal management, you, you name it, we, we do it. And uh, the, the third one is um, to, to train and to attract more uh, people and uh, newcomers to the power electronics industry to uh, uh, foster our uh, uh, business. Uh, within the, the project, uh, we're not so um, so much involved in the close to market yet, but we are trying to to get there. And we have so far uh, no close ties to Africa yet, so we are looking forward to making new connections and uh, looking forward to today's event. Okay, that's it from my side. Back to you, Anna. Thank you, Peter. So. Now that you know a bit more about, about us, uh, we will start with the main issue, main uh, topic about the, this webinar, which is the, 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 the presentation of the summary, let's say, of the main results uh, of the market reports that we have developed uh, during this, these first months of the project. So in this sense, I will uh, stop sharing my screen um, and I will give the floor to uh, Mikkel uh, and Enrique from from Minsight uh, that they will make the presentation of the yeah, of this analysis. Uh, so Mikkel, go ahead. Uh, I can't hear you. OK, 
Okay, wait a second. Uh, okay, you are unmuted, but I cannot hear you. I could hear you before, but. Uh, yeah, I see you now, Miguel, but I cannot hear you. And now? Yes. Okay. Now we... <laughs> I don't know why, because the, this doesn't work, but okay. And do you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to start. Uh, first of all, welcome and thank you very much for attending this ISICA Consortium webinar. We are uh, Miquel López Martínez and Enrique Rodríguez Souto, consultants at Minsight Business Consulting, a Spanish company that belongs to Indra. And we provide uh, business technology, strategy, and consulting services. Uh, and we are specialized, among others, in markets such as automotive, aerospace, and of course, energy, with the focus on, on renewable energies. For, for today's webinar, uh, we will discuss about the most relevant aspects related to renewable energies and smart grids in the five uh, sub-Saharan African uh, countries under HACET. But considering not only the renewable energy and smart grids uh, sectors, but also the regulatory framework, the key stakeholders, and the, uh, the main activities in research and development in relation to, to renewable energy, energies. But uh, before we start, uh, as Ander has mentioned, uh, to put uh, the project in context, it all started with a selection of 20 sub-Saharan countries from which we made a very preliminary analysis. Then we prioritized 10 of them, uh, taking into account the, the access you can see in the, in the right part of the, of the slide. And then we, we made a more detailed analysis of, of these 10, which resulted in another prioritization of five. Uh, that are those uh, we are going to speak uh, today, Ghana, Senegal, Kenya, Rwanda, and Tanzania. And with these uh, five countries, we have made an in-depth analysis that, uh, that are uh, those results you are going to see uh, in, this, in this webinar. The order of the, of the presentation will be as follows. We will start by talking about the two West African countries, uh, Ghana and Senegal. Then we will continue with the three East African countries, uh, Kenya, Rwanda, and Tanzania. And then we have prepared a final slide with the conclusions about the, the whole report. So to begin with, with uh, Ghana, uh, Ghana is a relatively dense country, especially in the southern regions, uh, with a good human development index uh, compared to other neighboring countries. Uh, their uh, position in terms of the issue of doing business is not as good as other uh, of the five we have analyzed, but uh, in, uh, considering the context of, of the West African countries, uh, Burkina Faso, Tongo, Benin, etc., et uh, they have a quite good uh, position in, the, in this index. And in terms of the national electrification rates, um, Ghana has experienced one of the highest growth rates in the electricity access in all the sub-Saharan Africa. And here it is worth highlighting that the electricity access evolution in rural areas has increased from the 8% in 2005 to the 70% uh, now in 2020-21. So this is one of the highest, uh, highest increases in, in all the West Africa in terms of, of electricity access. Then in the, in the concerning the renewable energy market, uh, starting uh, speaking about the, the resources, the renewable energy resources, Ghana has uh, great uh, solar energy resource potential in the northern regions because, as you know, they are located near the, the equator. Uh, on the other hand, uh, in the southern regions, there is also quite good uh, wine resources, especially near the Accra, that is the capital city, and in the region of Accra, that is the, the greater Accra. And finally, the, the hydropower potential is uh, scattered throughout Ghana, being the majority of the potential for mini, small, and medium uh, hydropower uh, projects. As you can see in the, in the upper right part of, the, of this slide, 
Uh, high top power is by far the renewable energy with the most installed capacity in Ghana by 2021. There are currently three utility scale operational plants, uh, being Akosombo, the largest one, because uh, Akosombo has 1,000 megawatts of, of capacity, but the other two remaining hydropower plants are also quite uh, big. Concerning solar energy, there are six operational plants, uh, but five of them uh, have no more than 20 megawatts uh, of capacity, but one stands out uh, that is called the Ensema Solar Power Station that has 155 uh, megawatts of, of installed capacity. But despite the fact that the, most of the installed capacity in renewables comes from hydroelectric power now in 2021-22, Ghana is the second country within the with the within the five uh, we have analyzed with the highest number of under construction or planned projects um, for the next five years from now to 2026. Uh, as you can see also in the in the chart uh, in the right part, uh, there are four under construction projects in in hydro, eight in in solar, and here we haven't included in the chart uh, one. Planet project in solar that is uh, that will be constructed by Huawei and Main Energy, and will consist of a solar solar energy plant of one gigawatt of installed capacity, so 1,000 megawatts of, of capacity. But as we don't know, the, the project has been announced, but we don't we don't know yet neither its location nor the the start of the of the construction phase. So we are not. We consider that will not be fi finished by 2026. So we haven't included here, but in the full report uh, we have included information about this project because we consider that is quite uh, is very big. It's a very big solar plant and it's quite important for the for the sector in Ghana. So in the in the full report there is more there is more information about this. Then in in wine farm. Uh, Despite the fact that there were no wind farms uh, uh, in, in Ghana in 2021, there are seven uh, planet uh, wind projects for, for the next five years and will have a total capacity of almost one, one gigawatt of capacity if all the projects are completed uh, in the times uh, as expected. And then to finish with this, uh, in, in, in bioenergy, there are no specific plans to develop uh, bioenergies um, in Ghana, as they are promoting other um, other types of renewables such as uh, solar, wind, and, and hydro. Continue with the with the second part of the of the analysis. One of the reasons why Ghana has such a good electrification rate is that the number of people connected to solar energy of rhythm and grid system has increased by 40 percent annually in the last five and or six years, especially with solar mini grids. But now there are limited uh, ongoing mini grid projects because of the high electrification rates. Here, the focus, as I will say the, uh, later in the conclusions, is to modernize and to digitalize the, the existing grids, and not to to construct uh, much more new new transmission lines or new grids. Uh, and here, for example, uh, the, the African Development Bank uh, has launched in 2021 the the Ghana Mini Grid and Solar Photovoltaic Net Metering Program which involves the, the development of 35 mini grids in the Volta Lake region in the south southeastern part, sorry, southwestern part. Uh, and then there are some private companies uh, carrying out projects in, in mini grids, but as I have said, the focus is more on digitalizing and modernizing the, the existing grids. Uh, then despite having, despite having little activity in energy storage, Several projects uh, have been announced recently. For example, as I have explained in the in the future projects of solar, Huawei and Main Energy, and Main Energy signed a collaboration contract to build a 1,000 megawatt uh, solar plant, and this will be linked to a 500 megawatt uh, battery storage system. Then there are some private companies such as Puma Energy that has announced uh, announced. The, the launch of uh, 11 projects to provide battery energy storage uh, in the in the infrastructure, and then of course there are other Ghanaian companies that offer a small scale solar photovoltaic systems together with little uh, battery storage solution, solutions uh, to isolate isolated uh, villages. And to finish with this part, 
uh, in terms of the electrical equipment, uh, generators, stabilizers and transformers are the most developed electrical equipment, but the sector is uh, quite underdeveloped. So as a consequence, there is a need to import more electrical equipment for mini and off-grid systems, especially related to solar energy, uh, to meet the, the demand of this kind of, of projects to, and to improve the electrification rate and the, the access uh, to insulated uh, communities, especially. Okay, uh, for the regulatory framework um, in Ghana, uh, the structure and distribution uh, of competencies in the energy sector, we found is uh, pretty clear um, with the particularity that the, there are two bodies with regulatory activity in the sector. There are also two public utilities that uh, generate the most of uh, countries energy, uh, the Volta River Authority, which is the most relevant and the Bui Power Authority, which manages the Bui Dam hydroelectric power plant uh, in the country. And uh, in Ghana, regarding uh, the electrification targets set by the, by the national strategies for 2020, uh, were not met, but there are a, a sufficient mechanisms put in place to, to achieve them in the medium term. There is, for example, a, a recent uh, Renewable Energy Act and a recent also a Renewable Energy Master Plan with a target for, for the renewable energy market. Uh, Ghana offers also a significant number of market incentives. Um, the most important ones are the obligation for power distributors to purchase uh, renewable energy. There are also a feed-in tariff scheme, uh, net metering, and also there are uh, some VAT and duty exemption for renewable energy products uh, such as panels, uh, solar panels, uh, wind turbines, uh, etc. There are a list there. Um, and finally, uh, for the regulatory framework, uh, we found that the consenting process in Ghana uh, is different according to the type of activity in the energy sector. Um, and one important thing here is that the license for energy production in Ghana has advantages for mini grids, for example, because uh, those smaller than 100 kilobytes are exempt from, from licensing. Uh, regarding the, the, the key stakeholders part that we analyzed, uh, we found that uh, the main stakeholders are still public in, in Ghana, but the renewable energy market uh, tends to liberalize in the last years. Uh, university and research and development centers as, are the most uh, important stakeholders in the country. Uh, also, they lack some application and transmission of knowledge uh, to, the, to the market. In Ghana, uh, independent power producers account for 36% of any energy production, but uh, their share uh, doesn't exceed the 10% in renewable energy because as Mikkel told you before, um, uh, most of the renewable energy is produced in three public uh, hydroelectric plants uh, called Akosombo, Pong, and Bui. And finally, uh, for the key stakeholders, uh, as also in the, in the most of the countries analyzed, uh, solar energy is the renewable energy with the largest number of relevant companies in, in the sector in Ghana. Finally, uh, the conclusions of Ghana for the research and development part in, re in renewable energy. We found that the, there is a significant number of agents with research and development functions in Ghana, but their activity and involvement in the, in the sector, in the renewable energy sector, is not very high now. Uh, we found the center of renewable energy and energy efficiency of Ghana as the most uh, active agents in terms of uh, R&D, uh, both in research work, but also in training new, new professionals for the renewable energy sector. And finally, in terms of R&D, uh, in specific technologies and technologies selected uh, by ESECA as important, uh, a battery energy storage system stand out because uh, 
there are some innovative projects such as the project the Mikkel told you before, the Huawei project that uh, will be the, the largest uh, battery storage system, uh, energy storage system project in, in Africa when finished. And there are also other technologies um, with activity in research and development, for example, wine and some bioenergy projects. So, Mikel, back to you with yes. Senegal. Okay, thank you, Enrique. Uh, to continue with the with the other West African country, uh, Senegal uh, said that the, the GDP has grown by four percent annually since 2010. So it's quite uh, less and less um, growth than in the other analyzed countries and their inflation levels have remained historically low compared to other uh, surrounding countries uh, being more or less at 2.5 percent in the last uh, three three years in relation to the indexes we have considered such as the easy of doing business uh, these indexes point out that senegal has a, is a country with difficulties to do business uh, but the, the relative position in terms in, in all the indicators related to energy are more acceptable, but in other aspects such as the tax burden or the building permits, the situation is, is worse than in, other, in the other analyzed countries. Um, concerning the, the electrification rate, uh, it has increased from the 47% in 2005 to the 70% of today. And the electrification, especially in rural areas, has doubled from the 23% in 2005 to, to, the, to the current uh, 48%. Uh, in terms of the, the resource potential in renewables, Senegal has solar and wind resource potential uh, mostly concentrated in northwestern, northwestern part of the country, from Dakar, that is the, the capital city of Senegal, to the border with Mauritania. Uh, whereas there is not much potential in resource potential in hydro energy, but however, this doesn't mean that uh, there are no hydro energy related projects uh, for the next five years, as we will see in a, in a few minutes. Again, as you can see in the in the right uh, upper right part of the slide, solar is by far the, the renewable energy with the most installed capacity in, in Senegal by 2021. There are currently eight uh, operational plants, uh, being a Kyle solar power plant, the, the largest one, uh, but it's just 35 uh, megawatts of, of uh, capacity. And in relation to wind energy, uh, there, are, there is just one operational plant, but it's the, the Park Eolien Taiwan Diaye, that is one of the largest wind farms in the sub Saharan Africa, not the largest, uh, but one of the largest, yes because uh, it has uh, 158 megawatts of, of capacity. Then in relation to the planet projects, uh, as you can see in solar, there are uh, four under construction or planet projects uh, and will reach the more or less 300 of, of installed capacity coming from solar by 2026. Then in wind, uh, there are no so many so many projects uh, planned uh, for the next five years, but there is a 100 megawatts extension plan for the Taiwan DIA wind farm, uh, which is expected to be uh, operational by 2025. And then here, as happened in Ghana, we haven't included uh, the Leona power plant here in wind uh, energy because uh, it has been announced, but the construction um, date uh, uh, we don't know the construction date at the moment, so we we, we have appointed it in the in the full uh, market reports, but uh, here we haven't included in the chart, so we haven't added here uh, another 100 uh, megawatts of capacity in wine. But uh, supposing or considering that all the projects are carried out as expected, uh, wine uh, will be the um, the renewable energy with the most installed capacity in Senegal by 2026. Uh, and then it's here it is worth uh, mentioning hydro because as I have said, even though Senegal has no hydro energy installed capacity in 2022 and, and there is no so much uh, resource potential uh, in Senegal, there are two relevant projects that will be carried out in the next five years, both of them in the in the southern regions of, of Senegal. The first one is the Gourbasi power plant, which will have just uh, 18 megawatts of capacity. But the other one, and much more relevant, will be the Sambangalow power plant, uh, 
uh, that will have a 128 megawatts of capacity. That is quite big considering that in Senegal there is not much, um, too much um, uh, hydro resource potential. And this plant uh, will be uh, built and will provide energy not only to for not only for Senegal but also to other uh, neighboring countries, uh, mainly Guinea-Bissau, Guinea-Conakry, and and Gambia. Uh, continuing with the with the next part, uh, Senegal's electricity transmission lines are more developed than those of the of the neighboring countries, and are used not only to provide energy to the Senegalese people but also to other countries, as I have said, uh, for example, Gambia, that is, the, uh, as you can see in the map, that is in the middle of, of Senegal. Then the, the number of people connected to, to solar energy related of grid and mini grid systems uh, has increased by 70% uh, in the last five years, reaching one million and a half people more or less connected to solar mini grids. But the, the majority of these people connected to solar mini grid um, Precisely, the 84% are connected to solar, uh, sorry, to a small uh, solar lightning devices that are less powerful than a solar mini grid. Uh, then, uh, considering the um, considering mini grids, uh, by 2021, Senegal was the second country worldwide with the highest number of planet mini grids because the, there are planet more than 1,200 mini grids uh, connections mainly from the Senegalese Rural Electrification Agency that, for example, in, in the mid-2021, uh, in September, uh, launched a call for tenders for 133 solar mini grids uh, in rural areas for the electrification of more, more or less 100 villages. Then in relation to smart grid related projects, uh, they, they are being developed right now uh, because the sector is not much developed. Uh, and mainly uh, are between collaborations between uh, Senegal and, and some foreign companies. Then in relation to the energy storage, the first utility scale battery energy storage system uh, will be developed in the Taiwan DIY wine farm and will consist of a 40 megawatts uh, of capacity battery system connected to the wine farm. But um, the activity in relation to energy storage uh, in relation to the renewables is uh, is still is not much developed and to finish uh, the the electrical equipment uh, in relation to to solar mini grids uh, is the most developed or has been very developed in the in recent years but is is very far from being uh, enough to meet the current demand uh, so uh, they have to import large quantities of equipment, mainly in this case, mainly from China, uh, to meet the, the growing demand of, of new connections. Uh, in Senegal, the, the electricity sector is organized around the Ministry of Energy, uh, around also three state agencies, uh, a regulatory body, a public electricity company called uh, Senelec, that has a monopoly in transmission and also in distribution, and uh, uh, around several independent power producers. Um, the letter of policy development of the energy sector uh, is the main document guiding the national energy strategy in Senegal and sets specific and important targets in renewable energy, for example, in wine, solar, and also in, in hydro as well as um, these letter points uh, to these technologies as, as, the, as the vehicle for the country to, to ensure uh, the energy independence uh, and also the rural electrification of the country. Um, regarding the, the market incentives in, in Senegal, we found that the bad exemptions on, yeah, on, on renewable energy products uh, are the most interesting market incentives because unlike other countries, um, for example, the fitting tariff system and uh, net metering have not been implemented at the moment. Um, regarding the consenting process, uh, all projects uh, higher than, with a stall capacity higher than 50 kilowatts are approved by the Ministry of Energy based on the regulatory body judgment. But in practice, we, we found that uh, many mini grids operate with, uh, without any kind of, of license in, in, the, 
in the country. Regarding the, the key stakeholders uh, chapter, um, a part of the government agents, uh, the most active and relevant stakeholder in, in the Senegalese market today uh, are the independent power producers. Um, because there is no large uh, associative movement around the renewable energies in Senegal, and the few associations that exist in, the, in this field are, um, are very recent. And uh, uh, for example, the, the Conseil Patronal de Energy Renewable de Senegal is uh, the most important one that we found. Uh, finally, among the, the, the relevant companies in the renewable energy sector in Senegal, as, uh, as happened in Ghana, solar energy and solar technologies uh, are the ones with the largest number of companies, especially um, in the delivery of uh, solar solutions to, to individuals. And also um, there, there are an, a number of relevant companies active in hydropower and other technologies such as geothermal or battery energy storage uh, systems. Um, finally, for, for the research and development, development part, um, in Senegal, there are uh, public agents with, with clear and general R&D guidelines. Uh, there are two ministries uh, and one agency with, uh, with uh, guidelines in research and development, but there is a lack of involvement of the public company, Senelec, and other uh, agents in the renewable energy sector uh, the last years. Among the, the SECA technologies or the SECA uh, um, Technologies that, that the, the, the consortium has selected sele, a selection as important for, for, for them or for us. Uh, solar is the one that uh, is generating the most uh, research and development activity in the country, thanks to, to university. And also because there is a specific uh, research and development center linked to the Polytechnic University of Dakar called uh, CT2S. And finally, also there are some activity in bioenergy. Uh, there are uh, a series of uh, R&D programs that have been promoted for the development of innovation in this technology. For example, we found interested and we put it in the, in the market report, the BioStar project. Um, and also there are some R&D programs focusing on small and medium companies and uh, also in rural areas of, of the countries. Uh, and finally, in other technologies selected by ESECA, uh, for example, battery energy storage system, the most part of these technologies, as Mikkel told us before, is important from, from China or from European countries. And there is not a lot of R&D activity uh, in Senegal uh, at the present. For Kenya, Michael. Okay, so continue with the first of the West African, sorry, the East African countries we have analyzed, uh, starting with, with Kenya. Uh, in, in terms of the ECE of doing business, uh, we have seen that inside this index there are several indicators. Uh, so we have seen that Kenya has a worse relative positions within the, the five analyzed in some of these several indicators uh, of the easiness of doing business, but the overall position is the, the second uh, among the five analyzed uh, behind Rwanda. In addition, the, this uh, index highlights the, the ranks uh, the country, uh, ranks the country relatively good um, in terms of the access electricity uh, to electricity, building permits, and the and the tax burden. Uh, in relation to the electrification rates, um, uh, as happened in, in Ghana, the focus is on modernizing the existing grids and not in extending too much the, the, actual, the actual grid because they have, yet, they have already developed the, the grids uh, in the last uh, 20, 15, 20, 20 years. Uh, in, with regarding the, the resource potential, Kenya has abundant renewable resources because they are uh, geographically located near the equator. So in central and western regions, the solar resource potential is quite interesting, but less than 1% of the estimated resource potential has been used uh, by 2022. Uh, in relation to wind, uh, as a result of some 
um, topographical features and, and their natural surfaces, how the, the country is, is located, uh, where is located. Uh, they have some specific uh, potential areas for wind energy, mainly in eastern provinces. Then in hydroenergy, they take advantage of the African Great Lakes uh, in the west part of the country. And in geothermal, as you probably know, uh, they are located uh, in the Rift Valley. So they are, there are a lot of uh, prospective sites where geothermal plants could be developed. As a consequence of having such great uh, renewable energy resources, as you can see, the, the renewable energy mix is much more diversified uh, here in Kenya than in the other analyzed countries. And I will say that in all the sub-Saharan uh, African countries, the most diversified energy mix is here in, in Kenya. There are 12 geothermal power, uh, uh, geothermal operational plants, five of them in the in the Olkaira volcano. That is one of the most interesting sites uh, for the development of geothermal plants. And then there are 10 hydro operational plants, four uh, coming from wind and two in, in solar. Uh, in addition to having the the most uh, diversified energy mix and to have abundant uh, renewable energy resources. Kenya is also the country within the five analyzed with the most number of, of under construction or, or planet projects uh, from the next five years. On the one hand in geothermal, there will be five additional power plants, um, the most important ones too in the, in the Olkaria volcano. So there will be a total of seven uh, geothermal plants uh, surrounding the Olkaria volcano, volcano and we'll have more or less uh, 1,000 megawatts of capacity just in this area. Uh, then in hydro, there are just three planet projects, but in solar, uh, there will be 11 and we'll have almost uh, 600 megawatts of uh, additional capacity in solar. And finally, in wind, uh, there are additional five, uh, but here has happened in, in Ghana, and in Senegal, we haven't included the, the Bubisa wine farm that is that will have 300 megawatts of capacity. But as he said in the in the other in the other graphics, uh, it's not included in the chart because the estimated commissioning date is not announced, and we consider that it will be uh, for not for 2026, but for 2030, for example, or or later. Uh, then uh, continue with the with the second part. There are more than 16 million individuals connected to solar off-grid systems um, in Kenya, mainly a small, a small solar lightning devices. But as of two, 2021, there were almost 1 million people connected to more powerful uh, solar home systems. That, this is because there are uh, too much, no, much public initiatives uh, and private companies uh, currently launching mini grid projects in Kenya and not in a specific zone, zone uh, in, in all the country, uh, but especially in Western central regions. And it is expected that more than 150 new solar powered mini grids will be developed in the, in the medium term. Then in relation to the smart grids, uh, there are, there, Kenya has a good context for the development of, of this type of technologies. Uh, because they have both public institutions and private companies initiatives uh, for grid digitalization. For example, uh, there is the, the Kenya Electricity Modernization Project uh, that um, uh, it is funded by the World Bank uh, and is, carrying, is uh, developed by Kenya Power and, it, and they are uh, carrying out uh, smart meter projects uh, targeting 55,000 small and medium enterprises. Uh, in relation to the, to the energy storage, Kenya has one of the most developed uh, energy storage systems markets and is expected to be highly developed in the, in the next decade. Uh, for example, Kenya Power uh, estimates that more than uh, 480 megawatts of, uh, of capacity uh, in battery energy storage systems will be required by 2026. Of course, uh, these uh, 480 megawatts uh, of battery energy storage systems linked to, to renewables, uh, the majority of them in, in Western Kenya. And to finish with this part, uh, concerning electrical equipment, uh, in Kenya, power cuts uh, mm -hmm. are frequent, mainly because of poor equipment, uh, sabotages, and, and thefts. Uh, but, uh, or one of the reasons, uh, 
this is one of the reasons why uh, Kenya is the country within the five analyzed with the highest amount in terms of uh, United States dollars of imports uh, of electrical equipment because they have to modernize the existing grids and they have uh, the development plans and the modernization plans to, to do so. For the regulatory framework of uh, Kenya, um, we found that the energy sector in Kenya is mainly structured around the Ministry of Energy, a regulatory agent and a rural electrification agency. In addition, uh, the generation distribution and transmission of energy uh, is mainly monopolized by uh, public companies uh, called KPLC, Kengen, and Kitraco. Uh, the Kenya National Electrification Strategy uh, is the name of the most relevant uh, and current uh, document for the country's uh, uh, energy sector and pays special attention to rural electrification in Kenya through, especially through off-grids and solar uh, home systems. Uh, regarding the market incentives um, in renewable energy, uh, have been uh, recently included the bad exceptions in 2021, which have been elimin eliminated uh, before with uh, COVID. Uh, the feeding tariff uh, scheme only for uh, a small scale biomass, uh, biogas, and hydro power projects, and net metering for producers of less than one megawatt. Uh, and finally, regarding uh, the consenting process in, in Kenya, there are some facilities uh, and license uh, exemptions for projects with an installed capacity of less than three uh, megawatts. Uh, regarding the, the chapter of uh, the key stakeholders, um, the most important uh, and powerful stakeholders in, in the country in the renewable energy sector are uh, still in the public sector. Uh, but uh, among all the other stakeholders, uh, we found that uh, for ESECA, it is an important, uh, there is an important and growing number of uh, independent power producers in the country and in the renewable energy market. And uh, we found also that these uh, independent power producers uh, have a great degree of uh, specialization, uh, for example, in, in geothermal. Uh, Regarding other uh, key stakeholders uh, in Kenya, the number of uh, universities uh, with uh, studies and also research in renewable energy is quite numerous. Uh, associations are uh, a relevant stakeholder in Kenya also, with Korea uh, as the main uh, as the main renewable energy association, and also as happened with independent power producers. Uh, for associations and research and development centers, uh, there is a certain degree of spe specialization. Uh, for example, uh, we found that uh, there are some centers uh, specialized in geothermal, for example, the Geothermal Training and Research Institute in the country. And uh, finally, um, regarding the, the renewable energy companies identified in Kenya, um, uh, as happened also in Ghana uh, and in Senegal, uh, um, the, they, they are part of the solar industry, especially in the installation and also in the distribution of solutions to companies and to, to individuals. And uh, finally, the conclusions in Kenya for the R&D uh, chapter. Um, we found that the Energy Act of the country assigned the specific uh, R&D responsibilities to public bodies. And also in addition, there are a number of uh, active centers and associations, but also companies uh, with uh, activity in R&D in the country. Especially, uh, we think that uh, the presence of uh, research and development centers in, in renewable energies is a much higher here in Kenya than in the other five countries uh, analyzed. Uh, as I told you before, geothermal is the, the, the most advanced uh, uh, technology in terms of R&D in the country, but um, because uh, it has a, a specific research and development center. Um, 
but also uh, other technologies selected by ESECA standouts, uh, for example, the solar technologies, especially in mini grids, because Kenya has a, also a mini grid innovation lab focused exclusively on testing, testing business models for, for the mini grid uh, sector, but also in other technologies, for example, in bioenergy and some projects in battery energy storage systems. Okay, so Sorry. I'm going to go a bit quicker uh, because of the time. Uh, so we're starting with Rwanda. Uh, Rwanda is the second densest country in Africa with Kigali, the capital as the densest region. Uh, in terms of the easy of doing business, uh, Rwanda is the easiest sub-Saharan African country to do business, uh, not only in sub-Saharan Africa, but in, the, in Africa, in the, in the whole region, uh, because they are ranked the 38. Um, and then, but then the electrification rate is just as an average the 38% and in rural areas uh, is, uh, is only the 26%. Here it is worth uh, saying that nearly the 70% of the population lives in rural areas and therefore, or without access to electricity or with difficulties to access to, to a good quality electricity. So they are potential beneficiaries of, of mini and of grid systems. In relation to the resource potential, uh, solar resource potential in Rwanda is mostly situated, situated in the southern regions and hydro uh, in, Sintra, in central and, and eastern regions, but they are far from being fully exploited. Rwanda stands out uh, in terms of their, their resources uh, in the biogas energy resources, uh, which are mainly located in the Lake Kivu. Uh, if you don't know the Lake Kivu, Kivu is a quite uh, big lake. Uh, that acts as a natural border between the Democratic Republic of Congo and Rwanda, and is, if not the most interesting, one of the most interesting locations in all Africa to, uh, for the development of biogas plants. And as you can see in the energy mix, there is currently one biogas plant in the, in the Lake Kivu with 25 megawatts of installed capacity, uh, but will have uh, in the next uh, five years, uh, it is planned an extension of additional 81 uh, megawatts, uh, as I have said, uh, expected to be finished by 2025. Then in hydro, there are, there are currently six utility scale hydropower plants uh, and four under construction or planet. Uh, the most important ones uh, are two that are operational in the Rusisi River is that with the another two that will be developed in the next years, we'll have a combining capacity of 500 uh, megawatts. Then in solar, uh, there are five operational plants and just one under construction that is quite small, uh, just only 11 megawatts of, of capacity that is called the Cayonza Solar Photovoltaic Park. And to finish with this, the, in, in relation to solid biofuels, uh, it is expected to be uh, finished by 2025, the Hakan Quantum Power Project that will be the first utility scale solid biofuels plant, plant in, in Rwanda. Uh, then uh, regarding the transmission lines, uh, it is expected that more or less 7 billion uh, United States dollars will be, or will be required to finance Rwanda's electricity transmission uh, investment plans until 2030. More than two million and a half people, more or less, are connected to solar mini grids, uh, mainly solar lightning because they are small scale, uh, small scale devices and more affordable uh, in terms of, of their, their price to, to people living in rural areas. But uh, also in Rwanda, due to their uh, geographical characteristics and their hydropower potential, uh, small and medium hydropower plants will be much more with not much much more, but will be much developed uh, in the coming years together with the with the solar uh, mini grid systems. Um, in terms of smart grids, uh, the Rwanda is facing significant challenges for the implementation of smart grids because the electrification rates are uh, just the, the 38 percent. Uh, but there are some uh, ongoing projects. Uh, mainly funded by the, for example, for the uh, coming from the World Bank uh, that has approved a 150 million uh, financing program for the modernization of, of grid systems in Rwanda. Uh, but then there are some 
some companies uh, starting to provide smart meters and data management services to a large number of customers, but compared to other countries, the activity is, is quite uh, low. Uh, then in, in relation to energy storage solutions and electrical equipment, uh, the activity is also low, but uh, and, and is uh, driven mainly by foreign private companies. Uh, for example, energy storage is, uh, is expected to grow significantly in the coming years, uh, as the use of a uh, renewable energy off-grid system combined with battery, with a small scale battery energy storage system, uh, are one of the fastest and most cost-effective ways of increasing Rwanda's electrification rates. And to finish with the electrical equipment, as I have said, uh, in the, sec the sector is driven mainly by foreign companies because the, the, the market is in an early stage of development, uh, but especially will be developed or is needed to be developed uh, in a small hydro and off-grid solar, uh, small hydro and off-grid solar related uh, equipment. Uh, because currently they are um, importing this equipment from, from foreign companies in this case, and more or less in the in the five analyzed countries, the, the most, of, most of this electrical equipment comes from China. Um, yes, again. Regarding the, the regulatory framework, in, in Rwanda there is no ministry with exclusive uh, regulatory competencies in energy, but there is an energy dictatorate within the, the Ministry of Infrastructure. Um, Rwanda has not developed a, a rural electrification agency, but uh, has a regulatory body called uh, Rura. Uh, the public company Rwanda Energy Group um, has the monopoly of transmission and distribution and the 50% uh, of the generation of the country and the rest corresponds to independent power producers. Uh, Rwanda has a national policy also aligned with, uh, with renewable energy objectives. And, but uh, on the other hand, Rwanda doesn't have very attractive uh, market incentives compared to the other five countries uh, we have analyzed. Uh, the most relevant ones uh, are the duty and bad uh, exemptions uh, for some uh, renewable energy products, but the um, uh, feeding tariffs scheme, for example, is only for small hydro uh, projects uh, at present. Uh, regarding the key stakeholder chapter, uh, the most relevant stakeholders in Rwanda are one, the, the independent power producers, uh, which has more than half of the country's installed capacity. And in the other hand, uh, a couple of renewable energy associations and research and development centers. So far, um, as I told you before, uh, independent power producers have entered the, the Rwandan market through especially uh, small hydropower uh, projects uh, and other some solar energy projects. Um, regarding the most relevant uh, renewable energy companies in Rwanda, uh, they come from hydro because of this uh, great number of small independent power producers. Uh, and also, as happened in the other countries, uh, from solar because of uh, uh, installers of solar solutions in particular. And finally, also it's important the number of companies in bioenergy, mainly uh, as Mikkel told you before, in biogas sector. And finally, uh, for the exploratory trips, uh, we found uh, that Rwanda hosts a relevant number of uh, renewable energy events this year. Uh, with special interest in, in solar and off-grid uh, technologies. And finally, quickly, with the research and development part, um, Rwanda, despite uh, not being one of the country's strength, uh, the research and development activity in solar sector in Rwanda uh, has been, um, have been important in, in recent years. Uh, we found especially smart grids um, uh, as an important technology in the country because have been uh, identified the smart grids as uh, one of the destination of the research and development uh, activity by the government due to their uh, relevance in the country uh, and in order not to depend on uh, foreign uh, technology. As uh, Mikkel told you before, uh, the, the main uh, importer 
uh, uh, of, uh, of this technology is from China. So government has um, these clear guidelines to, to develop uh, research around the activity in, in smart grids in the country. And finally for Tanzania, Miguel. Yes, to finish with, with Tanzania. Uh, Tanzania is a relatively safe country compared to the rest of the surrounding states. But however, the human development index uh, levels are still uh, very low. Uh, out of the five prioritized countries, uh, it is the worst position in terms of the ease of doing business and the other uh, indexes we have analyzed. And in relation to the electrification rate, uh, it has increased from the 14% in 2005 to the 38% in, in 2021. But as you can see in, in rural areas, uh, the electrification rates are still uh, very, very low, uh, just the 19%. In the coming years, the, the electrification uh, projects will be focused, of course, in rural areas, in mainly in center and southern parts of, of, the, of the country, where, as I have said, the electrification rates are less than the, the 20%. Uh, concerning the, the resource potential, uh, Tanzania has uh, solar energy resource potential mainly concentrated in the central and northern parts of the country. The hydro resources are located in, in the west, southwest and northern, eastern uh, um, regions. Uh, the wind energy is uh, in high elevated central parts, including the capital city of Dodoma. And here, of course, uh, there is also a huge uh, geothermal potential that has not yet been used. Uh, as we will see now in the energy mix, as you can see, uh, there is in 2021, there is no uh, geothermal energy operational plants, but there are plans to construct some, some geothermal plants. Uh, but starting with starting from the, the other uh, types of, of energies, uh, as you can see, the, the, the renewable energy mix is not very diversified. Hydro represents the 86% of the installed capacity. Uh, and then there is solar with 4% and solid biofuels with more or less the 10%. But uh, here stands out hydro energy for the next five years because uh, the capacity coming from hydro is expected to grow uh, more or less an 80%, 18% annually, reaching 4,000 megawatts in 2026. Uh, this is mainly because there are eight under construction or planet projects. The most relevant is uh, Julius Engerere, uh, that is expected to be finished by 2022 or the first part of 2023 if uh, the expected plans, uh, if everything goes um, as planned. And just this plan, plant uh, will have uh, 2,100 megawatts of capacity. So. The, the, the increase in, in the installed capacity from hydro will be, uh, will be significant uh, for the following years. Uh, continuing with solar, uh, there, are, there are at least five projects uh, planned for the, for the next five years. In bioenergies, uh, there are no planned utility scale projects uh, as the government, as, happen in other, as happens in, in other countries, are promoting other types of renewables such as solar, wind, and, and hydro. Uh, in relation to geothermal, there are no operational geothermal power, uh, power plants uh, right now, but there are plans to install a 200 megawatts geothermal plant in the Ngonsi crater, uh, where the, it is expected to have uh, more or less uh, 600 megawatts of capacity in total uh, resources. And they will start, uh, as I have said, with a 200 megawatts uh, geothermal plant in this crater and is expected to be uh, fully operational by 2025. And to finish with, with wine, uh, as of 2021, there were no utility scale wine farms in Tanzania, but the first utility scale farm is expected to be operational by 2023 near uh, Dodoma. Uh, continue with the second part, uh, Tanzania is the most interesting country within the five analyzed for the development of mini grids and of grid systems especially in central and uh, in northern regions. The, the, number, the number of people connected to solar mini grid has multiplied by three in the last five years and is expected to grow exponentially in the coming years because of lower electrification rates. 
For example, uh, power gen renewable energy that is a Kenyan company has recently signed an agreement with the cross-boundary cross -boundary energy access for the development of 60 uh, solar mini grids in rural areas. And there are uh, some private companies that are uh, also developing mini grid projects, but is expected this, uh, the activity in relation to, to mini grids is expected to grow uh, significantly in the, in the coming years. Then, as happened in Rwanda, the smart grid sector uh, is not or is very limited uh, because the electrification rates are low and the technology the technologies are, are still incipient. Uh, because, as I have said, they, they are focused on, on the grid expansion and, and not in the modernization of the existing of the grids that are that already exist. Then, uh, regarding the, the energy storage. Um, there is a growing activity regarding uh, energy storage because the use of photovoltaics, uh, mini grids, uh, photovoltaic mini grids, uh, and battery energy storage system linked to those uh, photovoltaic systems uh, are the most viable option for the for the quick electrification of, of rural areas. And there are several uh, international institutions such as the World Bank, the African Development, uh, the African Development and Investment Bank, that are. Um, exploring this kind of, of projects. And to finish with this part, in, in relation to the electrical equipment, the market is, is very limited and is mainly concentrated in the, in the eastern coast, especially around Dar es Salaam. Uh, but they have, as happened in other countries, they have to import large quantities of electrical equipment, uh, mainly from China, because they, the market there is, is very, very limited. Okay, and to finish with the last report, um, in Tanzania, um, the energy sector is structured around the Ministry of Energy, the Energy Regulator, the Rural Electrification Agency, and the Public uh, Power Utilities. Uh, among the public companies, Tanesco is the most relevant one, responsible for a, a large part of uh, the generation. Um, and the monopoly of transmission and distribution in the country. The national energy policy uh, of Tanzania guides the country's energy policy since uh, 2015 and established also a quite the relevant number of uh, provisions for the renewable energy sector. Uh, among the most important market incentives uh, in, in, in Tanzania, uh, there are bad and duty exemptions for some, but not all, uh, renewable energy products, and also the feed-in tariff scheme. Uh, Tanzania, as well as Rwanda, um, and, and unlike other countries in the region, uh, has not implemented uh, the net metering regulation for small renewable energy generators uh, at the present. And um, for the key stakeholder part, um, uh, Tanzania, in Tanzania, universities and research and development centers are uh, very active in renewable energies, uh, energy sector, and Tarea uh, stand up, stands out as the most uh, important association in the sector in the country. Independent power producers are also a relevant stakeholder because of uh, its number, especially in, in hydro, mini hydro, and solar. Um, uh, but most of these uh, independent power producers in Tanzania manage production plants with very, very little installed capacity uh, at the moment. Um, regarding the most uh, relevant uh, companies in the sector, uh, we found that the, they are placed as always in solar, especially in installation and distribution, but also in mini hydro or hydro uh, or the hydro sector, hydropower sector. And uh, finally, uh, to conclude with uh, R&D, uh, the research and development activity in Tanzania is um, not very high if we compare it with uh, the other uh, four countries, especially if we compare it with, uh, with Kenya. Uh, but we found, uh, for example, the Renewable Energy Technology Center uh, and some research and development associations, for example, TAREA, uh, that are uh, active agents in R&D uh, that are dedicated directly or indirectly to generate knowledge and research on, uh, on new forms of, uh, 
of sustainable energy or clean energy uh, in Tanzania. And finally, regarding the SECA technologies, uh, hydropower is the most developed technologies in R&D in recent years in Tanzania. Um, and uh, the research and development of some private companies in the, co in the country has been increasingly increasing in the, in the last year, especially for small scale projects. And uh, to finish with the conclusions. Yes, to finish with the, thank you, Enrique. To finish with the conclusions in just two minutes. Uh, to sum up, the, the five Sub Saharan African countries have great development opportunities in some of the discussed area, areas. Um, to be quick, uh, in the socioeconomic context, um, Rwanda stands out in the issue of doing business. But then in the in the in some other indicators is not very well positioned, and this happens in other countries that are well positioned in some of the indicators, but not in the others. But in general, um, Rwanda and Kenya are the, the best positioned in in, this, in the indexes we have analyzed. In relation to the to the regulatory framework, the institutional and legal framework framework of the energy sector is correct in all the selected countries. Of course, considering the African region and not compared to other European countries, for example. Uh, in the renewable energy market, uh, Kenya and Tanzania are the, far the, are the countries with the most renewable energy resource potential, but Kenya has made uh, further progress. Uh, and then Kenya and Ghana are the countries with the largest number of planet projects uh, for the next uh, five years. Uh, uh, and in the other hand, as the electrification rates are lower in Tanzania and Rwanda, this two countries are the most interesting countries for the development of mini and of grid systems. Uh, following with the, or continue with the key stakeholders, uh, Tanzania is the country with the highest number of stakeholders related to renewable energies. Uh, but on the other hand, in Rwanda and Senegal, the IPPs stand out as relevant stakeholders, while in Ghana there are the, the research and development centers, and in Kenya stand out the specialization of some stakeholders, uh, for example, the research and development centers of in, in geothermal. And finally, in research and development, uh, general, generally research and development activities in the renewable energy sector are, uh, are, are low. But there, are, there is not much, much activity in terms of uh, research and development of renewable energies. Uh, but um, within the five analyzed, uh, Kenya is the country with the most uh, research and development activity in, in the renewables we have uh, analyzed. Uh, and Senegal also stands out uh, thanks to the universities or the university activities that are quite active. And one said this, uh, thank you very much for, for your attention and I hope you found it interesting and, and useful. And as, as, and as Ander has said, if you has if you have any question, uh, please say in the write in the in the chat. Thank you. Uh, and Enrique for the presentation. I know it is a lot of information to, yeah. to receive in just one webinar, but you will have, as I said, the, the this presentation available uh, for you. Um, uh, also, there was a well a bit of. A, comment question in the beginning uh, regarding the, the the criteria used to select the countries and those things i mean uh, i will answer this a bit and, and Miguel, if you want to add anything else but uh, we did a, as i said in a screening of 20 countries of africa uh, that we consider were the the, the, the main uh, interesting uh, countries at that point uh, we analyzed a bit the, 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 the energy resources and the, and the economical situation in each of those countries, and we end up with 10, with, which we did a, a high-level analysis, which will uh, also is available uh, and of 10 countries where we enter a bit more into detail and then developing a, a matrix of uh, which one was better in terms of economical situation, uh, regulatory framework, plans of uh, uh, energy development, uh, renewable energy development plans, smart grids, uh, 
considering all that in the mixture, we, we just end up with these five countries. Um, uh, I think more or less that uh, sums up everything that we did in this sense. So right now I wanted also to, to, to make among the participants a, a quick poll. Uh, you should be able to see now uh, the, the companies that are uh, in, the, in, the, in the webinar. So uh, the first uh, is it's just a quick poll to, to know which which companies uh, uh, sorry which companies uh, which kind of uh, countries or activities are more, of more interest for the for, for for the companies that are participating in the webinar. So if you could answer um, this um, these questions, uh, just the first one will be would be which are the countries uh, that are of more interest for you. Um, <clears throat> then uh, the second question would be, if you, at some point in the future you will be interested in attending um, a mission organized by the SECA partnership uh, to some uh, of these countries. And the third question would be, uh, in case of attending these missions, which are the activities that would be of more interest uh, of more interest for you? So I will give you just to to break a bit the the, the presentations and all the the analysis that you have seen uh, uh, in in the in the previous presentations. Uh, I will give you a couple of moments to to answer the questions uh, which would be very interest interesting for us to know your answers so and then after that uh, we will start with the presentation of the SMEs that will give us uh, their take on how to do business in Africa so okay I, I'm receiving some questions, I'm oh, sorry, some answers about, I have about nine, uh, 12 answers right now, so more or less. I'm seeing that Senegal and Ghana seem to be the ones that are leading the poll. <laughs> uh, in terms of coming with us in a mission, most of the people are interested, so that's good. And in terms of activities developing these missions, well, mainly matchmaking events and B2B meetings with companies would be the, the key activity uh, for the companies. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think I will close the poll now. Thank you for your answers. Uh, we will consider them uh, and we will, of course, uh, keep you in contact, uh, keep, keep, uh, keep in contact with you. Um, so we continue collaborating in the, in the project with you. So, uh, okay. So yes, now I will give uh, the floor to um, we have received. A, okay, we will. Okay, sorry. Uh, um, now I will give the floor to the to the SMEs. Uh, you have about ten minutes to do your presentation, more or less. So uh, the first one uh, will be. Quentin Bolan, yeah, uh, I think I have pronounced that correctly. <laughs> um, uh, he's from the company Setec. He will present a bit more the details of the company and, and their experience in Africa. So uh, Quentin, if you want to share your screen. Yeah.
you should see it. Yes. Yeah, right. all good. Okay, perfect. So, um, well, thank you, Anders. Thank you uh, to the SAPAC consortium for giving uh, uh, me the opportunity to present the SAPAC activities uh, in Africa and how we uh, penetrate this, uh, these markets. Um, so maybe ju just to start, I will give a very short uh, presentation of what we do, and then I will focus maybe on a sort of practical point of view. Uh, the, I will try to, let's say, give a company answer to the result of the study and uh, to uh, react on, uh, on what was presented. It was very uh, uh, interesting uh, for, for, for me since we are active in some markets, exploring others, and not yet active. Uh, present in, uh, in, in, uh, in, in other countries. So we have a, a, bit of, a different approach to the different countries that are presented. Uh, so CETEC Energy Environment, it's a French engineering company that is specialized, uh, well, as the name indicates, in the environmental sector, but uh, very concretely, we work with three, uh, three types of activities. The first one is um, resource optimization and circular economy. So to simplify, let's say it's everything that's related to waste management. We work on environmental preservation. So it's um, uh, environmental impact assessments, uh, climate action plans, air quality studies, uh, biodiversity studies, and uh, this type of uh, activities. And on decarbonation and renewable energy, which is, which is uh, more of interest uh, today. Um, what we do in this in this field is basically we are active in different segments of the of the sector. So we, we work on uh, industrial economy and the recovery of the lost energy from industrial processes. We work on renewable energy, biogas, and hydrogen. Um, then uh, we deal with issues related to uh, electricity energy networks, so the electricity networks or uh, heating and cooling. Uh, and electrification, and then we have an activity that is, that is dealing with the captation and usage of, uh, of CO2. Uh, obviously, we don't do all of that in uh, sub Saharan Africa. So, for instance, captation and usage of CO2 is maybe, maybe less. Um, I, will, I will talk later about what we focus on uh, in, in Africa. And in these different sectors, of, um, in these different segments of the energy market, what we do is, I would say, rather classical for an engineering company. We do master plans, strategic studies, and feasibility studies. So everything that is, let's say, before uh, the construction of the facility. Then we work as a PMA and or, or PMC, the project owners, and we work supervision in the stage of uh, constructing the facility. And in every project, obviously, we work on the project's acceptability, and we have a team dedicated to such issues. Um, whether is it dealing uh, with the environment, dealing with the integration of the informal sector, or or, 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 or other aspects. Quentin, yeah, uh, one issue. Yes, we are hearing you like a bit from, I don't know, from far, something like that. I don't know if you can make something to solve it or. Yeah, let me check. I, it's, yeah, it's like a bit blurry. Okay, let me see. Sound. Is it better? A bit better, maybe. Yeah. Okay. I don't have a mic here. Oh. Okay. Let's see if it's better like that. Yeah, I think it's a bit better. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, continue. Yeah. It's okay. Um, so that being said, um, in these different market sectors, uh, how do we approach the, the African markets? Um, first thing to know about CETEC is that we are a CETEC Energy Environment an independent company, but we have the uh, chance to be part of a larger group of companies, so a disciplinary engineering company that has a local uh, subsidiary based in Africa. This is called CETEC Africa, and that is based in Abidjan, with offices in Senegal, Benin, Cameroon, uh, Congo, or Madagascar. So obviously, it's a chance for us, and we, uh, we work a lot when we develop and we conduct projects with this uh, local company. 
Um, what's important to know is that this local company, they, they do not have in-house the expertise in the energy and environmental sector, but what they, what they bring us is a knowledge of the local context, uh, knowledge of local stakeholders, and they, facilitate, they can facilitate uh, finding and working with local specialized companies. So they are a relay uh, for us to help, to help us, let's say, open doors what the public authority and what the uh, open government is for, um, for, for approaching the private sector. Um, then, so our approach is based on making the best of, the, of having this uh, branch. What we try to do also is as, as often as we can not to approach uh, the market and not to develop, develop projects alone. And for that, we work a lot as parts of um, clusters or networks. So uh, we work with, uh, with Mede, obviously. We work with uh, uh, the Club Adena International, which is a, a, a club of companies working in the, uh, let's say, green economy sector that is hosted by the French Agency for Energy and Environment. Uh, and we work also as part of international clusters like the um, CTCM, so which is a UN uh, mechanism uh, that supports in particular early stage project development, which is something that from what we see as an engineering company is often uh, missing in, uh, in Africa, meaning that very often we have local uh, like stakeholders or authorities that will have an, an ID but obviously, the I, uh, I mean, the idea doesn't make a project and to secure funding for the, either for the studies, for the feasibility studies or for the investment, uh, you need uh, upstream uh, studies and strategic studies that, uh, that are generally quite difficult to find financing for. And this uh, CTCM uh, is, a, is, a, is a network that, uh, that makes it possible to do so. Um, and obviously, what we try to do also more and more is to have a really a proactive approach and approach in partnership partnership approach, which means that we do not uh, wait for tenders to come out and then uh, reply and answer to tenders. We increasingly try to be involved upstream and to, to develop ties with uh, local authorities, with local businesses, with the uh, IFI and to, let's say, co-construct the projects. Um, so what, what we, and the, the idea uh, with that is basically to be less dependent on, um, on, uh, on a few large projects, but to have uh, also a wider portfolio of projects that leads to a more stable activity and a more diverse activity in Africa. Uh, so to do so, what we try to do is to identify Size market segments where we have a value, uh, an added value compared to our competitors and compared to what is uh, existing and is available on the local market. So, um, very concretely, in the different areas uh, that we are active today, we are in Sub Saharan Africa, we identified uh, the two key uh, segments of the market, which are uh, the bioenergy sector which are the issue of uh, autonomization of energy supply of uh, sensitive infrastructures or, or of industrial processes. And um, I would say everything that is related to uh, mini grid, but on mini grid generally we try to be, uh, always uh, work on more larger projects, so either with developers of uh, solar solutions, or for instance, right now we are working in Gabon uh, on a linear infrastructure project, so a highway, and that includes the need for electric electrification of, of, of some segments of the highway and some uh, tolls. And the project, obviously, the idea was also to use this project to, to electrify the neighboring villages. So we bring the components on uh, on on uh, mini grid and on electrification as part of wider projects. Uh, then, while we, as I said, we try to build partnerships with local companies and NGOs and public authorities, and very often we try to team up with other companies to bring turnkey solutions. Uh, that means that to be able to offer basically solutions from the early stage project development to the point where the infrastructure can be operational. It includes uh, other act 
uh, other type of, of, of matrix. Um, obviously, to do all that, we had to, uh, well, we use, uh, we use our local branch, but we also have to allocate dedicated resources to engage the local structures and to be able to anticipate the project. So we have to engage in, the, in market intelligence in a way, uh, which uh, for uh, even so CETEC uh, in the environment are about 100 people. So we have some human capacity for some smaller SME, which can be uh, maybe more, more difficult, but it's, some, it's something that we see as very needed. And we are already right now seeing the first benefits of uh, this approach uh, with uh, promising prospects uh, and uh, needs. So we already start now to know uh, what will come out in the next six months to one year in a couple of countries, which gives us a competitive edge uh, than the tendering process that we did not have had if we didn't engage in this, uh, let's say, proactive and prospective activity. Um, and to do all that, luckily, uh, in, in France, I know, I know less the, the system in, in other countries of Europe, but we, we have uh, a wide diversity of tools that we mapped and then we tried to mobilize that allows us to engage into, uh, let's say, uh, either uh, pilot projects, uh, for instance, right now, uh, a project financed by the French Ministry of Economy, that is a pilot project on uh, covering 27 cities in Cameroon, uh, more on the waste management aspect that, that, that allows us to develop an innovative approach that we see as being able, uh, as uh, having the high potential for replicability uh, in other countries, and that is very specific. So that can give us a competitive edge afterwards to cover uh, other countries. And then, for instance, we use the mechanism of Group in France uh, that finances um, uh, market intelligence and uh, protection on, uh, on uh, protection activities on new markets. So, which allowed us to allocate dedicated resources. Um, and what I want to mention here is that really uh, this um, uh, prospective activity, it's, uh, it's uh, obviously a cost, but well, we see it basically as a, uh, as a way to increase the, the, turn, the turnover. So it's, uh, it's not for us a simple cost. Really, uh, right, right now, uh, we see and we expect basically that uh, all the activities that we conduct upstream uh, and to identify market opportunities to uh, build a relationship of trust with local, with local partners and with local authorities uh, will be very uh, will lead to uh, economic benefits uh, within the next uh, one to two years. Um, and, uh, and this is very necessary, in my opinion, because even when you have uh, uh, when you meet local local stakeholders, when you know uh, the institutional uh, systems, uh, besides just the uh, formal functioning, a lot uh, happens, let's say, in informal discussion. So uh, this practice uh, uh, really really makes a difference uh, in in, uh, in finding opportunities and in design developing opportunities. Actually, with the just maybe two examples of projects that we did and that we are looking to replicate right now. Um, the first project we put in Ivory Coast, where we work on the bioelectricity segment. So basically, we played on our strengths using the fact that we are both active in the, uh, in the solid waste sector, which where in, the, in this segment of the sector, we are quite well known in, uh, in Africa. We are less known in the energy sector, so we are developing right now activities in the bioenergy sector using agri agricultural residues to produce, to produce energy, which is at the frontier between our waste management uh, capability and our energy, uh, energy expertise. We did it in Ivory Coast, and now we see it as one of the niches that we or one of the markets we focus on. We talk to uh, a lot uh, in the presentation of the work before about solar, about wind, a little less about bioenergy, 
it's something that we see every countries where we are active, mostly in, in Western and Central Africa, as a very high intellect pool. A lot of them have the development of bioenergy written in their um, strategies in 2030, 2035. But very clearly, it's not mature at all. There's often no data available. So um, for, for us, it's really somewhere where we were as an engineering company. We have an added value compared to the solar and wind, where, uh, let's say, project developers can arrive and have their own uh, engineering teams uh, in-house. In uh, and then the second project that we did with, uh, in, uh, with the support of, uh, of Medi and the Région de France, we contributed to uh, the study and the installation of the TV system for partial autonomization of the university campus in uh, Kinshasa. Uh, and this type of activity is something that we, that we decided to focus on in uh, our development in, in Africa. Um, what we saw is that uh, even when you have uh, electricity access, so we talked about electrification rates, but what we saw is that even in big cities in, uh, in Africa, even when you have uh, access to electricity, electricity, the quality of uh, electricity access, the side and side three indexes for power cuts are, are a problem for, uh, for a lot of sensitive activities or for industries. Um, and it's, uh, when solar, TV, and wind grid had a, for a long time work, the focus on, was on rural areas, we see right now more and more uh, industries, private businesses, or hospitals thinking about, uh, about the need to uh, become autonomous of the energy grid and developing their own uh, energy production system, including, uh, including uh, storage. And it's a second segment where, where we are, uh, that we are focusing on. So uh, really, we, we try to identify among all the activities that we can do, what, where we have the most value added for, for the African market. And we ended up on these uh, three segments. Uh, so bioenergy, uh, autonomization of energy, of energy supply for sensitive infrastructure, and um, uh, new grid but we need when connected to larger infrastructure projects because there we can use the strengths of the, of the port city group and of other brands of companies doing the specific studies. So thank you. I will stop here. Uh, yes. I think I'm a bit fast, so but if there are any questions, of course, uh, uh, oh. happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you uh, for the vision of your company in Africa for these examples that um, could uh, give an idea to the companies attending the webinar uh, on how to work there and also looking for possible collaborations to 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 start um, doing doing this uh, developing these uh, activities in Africa. So uh, let's continue uh, because we are a bit uh, with a delay here. Uh, let's continue with the next presentation of the next SME uh, that will be the one closing the webinar. Uh, uh, are you there? Luciano, Dr. No. Dr. Giannini, are you there? That will be now. Yeah. Uh, I activate. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much for inviting me to this interesting uh, webinar, and uh, thank you particular to the organizer of this event. When. I just uh, try to 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 condivide the screen. Yes. Well, 
I mean, the founder of uh, uh, startup innovative companies. One thing and, uh, if, if you could put in the whole screen, the yes, please. Yes. yes. So, okay. 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 I'm the founder of uh, this company, Energy for Sustainable Development, uh, incorporated in particular to offer new technology in a customized way to the African countries. Uh, in principle, this works in any uh, third world country, but we want in particular to focus on Africa because it's closer, because uh, there are some issues uh, related to the immigrations and so on. And then there is a lot of possibility or opportunity to offer something in order to promote sustainable development condition in those countries. We particularly focus well, we are a team of senior managers uh, coming from companies like ABB, General Electric, Alstom, ENI, and so on. So then among the major uh, energy companies in Europe. And then um, uh, we decide to concentrate our knowledge in terms of technology, of management, and international networking in these companies. We have been, uh, uh, we have created 10 patents and uh, we are still working on other patents. Our vision, what is our vision for Africa in particular for sub-Saharan country? To convert this kind of health in a fertilized country, in fertilized lands, uh, proposing modular and innovative solutions for sustainable development based on rational use of renewable energies, water, health, and waste. Normally we say that uh, we want to promote sustainable development leading from natural uh, resources locally available, but not exploited, like sun, like water, like wind, like uh, land, uh, like waste as well. Well, I would like to be short because I think we don't have a lot of time, but normally what we do, we integrate different technology, power generation, clean water production, production for irrigation, ice, ice, etc. Build eco-sustainable housing as we have, uh, we have power from renewable energy, we have water coming again from renewable energy, and uh, with the health, with the land, we can uh, manufacture clay bricks to make a sustainable housing. And then once we have, a, uh, we, once we have a, a water, land, fertilized land, we can have a vegetable and fruit juice production. So energy just is a trigger to promote sustainable development condition. What we do, our solution are designed for, let's say small, medium, renewable energy plants, water treatment, waste management, mainly uh, organic management, desalination system and energy efficiency. We are able to provide these singular technologies, but at the same time we can combine them and move towards a smart agriculture to produce, to, uh, to build up technological greenhouse, intelligent irrigation system, hydroponic system, uh, agro-industrial system that are mainly based on a circular economy model and then biogas system. And this is, uh, uh, we are working even in smart farming and sustainable housing. Uh, this is uh, one of our patent. To, uh, to generate uh, wind energy. Normally, this is a, with a vertical axis uh, versus this one that is with, uh, with horizontal axis. One thing particular that uh, if 
you produce uh, the same quantity of energy, for instance, this is a 200 kilowatt, this is the half size of uh, this one, of the horizontal one. But uh, it's not only half size, but it's more efficient. It's a very low, low environmental impact. And uh, uh, you have to consider that normally with this system, you have to put uh, 100, 150 meters away here, more closer they are, more energy you produce. Uh, this is uh, an example we have uh, even uh, hydro generators, even if you don't have a, a big uh, uh, gap of water, you can produce in a small river, in a small channels energy as well. This is our, as I said before, we want to use uh, natural resources. And we would like to convert this kind of land and this one to fertilize, fertilize for, to, to, uh, to push agriculture. And at the same time, you construct this kind of house. This kind of house is, uh, is built using bricks from uh, 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 not cooked uh, bricks. Uh, I show you normally to, to with, uh, with uh, raw earth, uh, we produce the this kind of bricks, but we don't use any energy to produce them. We use only solar energy, natural solar energy. And uh, with this brick, we build this kind of houses. Uh, this, uh, this houses is, uh, it was built in Italy, in Italy, in, in uh, Sicily, but uh, it may be this color is not comfortable for the African countries but you can use any kind of uh, color using the local hearth. And this is very cheap, but gives you a great comfortable because they have a 50%, they conserve a 50% of humidity. And if you have a heat, the humidity is evaporating and refreshing the environment. If it's getting colder, you, uh, you have a condensation of the humidity of the hair and you have a, 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 an a warmer environment. This is a very easy to, to install. So to do this, you need water, energy, and the earth. Energy without energy, you don't do anything. So what uh, we are focusing in a particular segment where you have solar energy, you have uh, with the power from the solar energy, you can pump the water from the soil and you can uh, use the water to generate, to produce ice to the preservation of the food. And uh, you can, uh, use the water for irrigation, of course, but to build social housing as well like this. This is uh, an example. This is a particular design according to the local habits, costume and culture. Here is the north and you have the day, the day uh, life. Here you have uh, the cooking, the kitchen, you have uh, the the lunch room, and you have the sitting room, and here the the room, the sleeping rooms as well. And of course, you have a patio with baobab. Normally, the social life comes here, and so on. And here you have some conservation system uh, tools. For instance, the air, the hot air coming from outside, goes in in the house five meters beneath and comes out from here to refresh 
the environment as well. We are building uh, the, this kind of communities in, uh, in the north of Senegal with the support of the local government and so on. Uh, uh, we went uh, quite recently, we, uh, we were at the television and uh, we got a lot of interest from other communities within the country and outside the countries, the coming, uh, the, let's say, the Francophone countries, and are quite interesting in this kind of solutions. Because uh, I haven't shown you before, but at the same time, we are able to, this is one of the system we have done it. Yeah, you have energy from any kind of source, from any kind of renewable source. You have put some in storage because we have some plants that work 24 hours a day with the, with the power, we pump the water from, uh, from uh, uh, the underground. We treat the water in such a way that it's safe, it's drinkable, and part goes for irrigation, but most goes for washing fruits and vegetables to produce, uh, um, uh, to produce uh, Jewish fruits and, and Jewish uh, vegetables. And all the ways go in biogas system. And biogas system, then we have uh, some patterns uh, here in the systems in order to produce fertilized. Fertilized with a particular concentration of calcium, sodium, and phosphorus. And uh, at the same time, with the heat develop, we, produce, we are able to cultivate alga for animal, uh, for an animal feed. And this is more, this is one of the uh, circular economy models. We have others more or less based, uh, always a trigger, always from the energy. This is a, a more or less, uh, uh, this is for instance, a product that you know quite well, and uh, it's a uh, Diana card, but Diana card uh, we forget. We use normally this piece. This is, this is Diana card but we eject this, this apple, we don't use. This apple is used for making juice fruit only in Brazil, but in this country is not used, but is very rich in uh, vitamin, vitamin C. For instance, this is the concentration of vitamin C in a cashew apple. And if you compare this with the concentration of vitamin C in orange, uh, uh, in orange, you can see that this is five, six times more than this. And normally this is a, it's a, it's a waste and we want to recuperate this, either with the juice fruit, either by extracting directly the vitamin C. That in this case, vitamin C is a natural one against what we buy in the, our pharmacies in Europe that are uh, artificial ones. Uh, in doing this, uh, we went so far very slowly because we have a uh, long discussion with the local authorities, but everything was out of financing. If we could have had some financing from, I don't know, from Europe, so from other organizations, we could be very fast. But uh, with this kind of models uh, in uh, Let's say it's uh, very expensive at the beginning, because but uh, very expensive. Uh, it's expensive, but uh, in a short time you can uh, recuperate all the investment done. And in this case, all these houses uh, are going to have, of course, solar energy, but we have a treatment of waste water and uh, treatment. Uh, to produce biogas for organic waste as well. And uh, uh, this is uh, more or less what we are doing. Uh, we are a small, a young company. I mean, all the managers are seniors, but coming from previous experience, as I said before, but uh, as we are young, we are not able to cope with all the opportunities we are going to have in West Africa. 
So we will be able first to cooperate with anyone interested in any kind of technologies. And uh, if uh, in the if uh, uh, as a network uh, you that you organize this webinar are able to propose this kind of project in order to be financed by the EU. I mean, at the very early stage, because uh, after a month, uh, this this uh, kind of project can produce uh, a cash. This is more or less uh, what uh, what uh, I have uh, our experience uh, in Senegal, but we can uh, we have a request for other countries in Africa as well. Thank you, thank you for the presentation and the projects that you have been showing the project that you have been developing in Africa. So thank you all that uh, have attended the webinar and. Yeah, I will uh, start sharing. Um, just uh, I wanted to have. Uh, sorry, a uh, couple of uh, slides with the uh, next steps that we have. Uh, we will be developing in in a SECA partnership. Uh, thank you for the people that have uh, uh, joined us today and that have uh at the time to to be until the end and just so you know uh, the seca partnership will be in the following uh, events in Leng rencontre africa in lyon uh, um, a forum a, a specific forum that will develop in lyon uh, with a focus on senegal um we will also develop uh, three exploratory trips uh well uh, yeah, one to Kenya and Tanzania in the same at the same time, more or less, where we will attend uh, the R Energy Access Investment Forum in, in Tanzania, Dar es Salaam. Uh, and we will also uh, develop a SESECA partnership exploratory trip to Senegal, uh, attending the Association of Power Utilities 20th Congress in Dakar. Uh, we are also collaborating uh, in the from, mostly from our Germ German partner in the in the alliance in the off grid expo conference that uh, is developed uh, under collaboration with Are also that will uh, happen this year in the in will be celebrated in in the first days of of December in Augsburg. Um, and last but not least, I wanted to mention uh, this. Uh, this is a, 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 the networking event that we are preparing for um, for the first European networking event of ESECA that will be developed in September in Lille, in France, uh, by our partner Paul Mede. Uh, this is just the first view of the conference. Uh, uh, where we will divide it into well one and a half days, uh, and right now we are developing the the agenda of those days. Uh, we will have uh, roundtables, workshops, uh, pitching sessions uh, during the, the the conference. It's free of charge uh, of all of those attending. Uh, you can join us uh, there. Uh, it's uh, open to everybody, uh, every European or African companies really uh, that want to attend. Um, we have uh, also developed a, a, a brief questionnaire uh, to kind of a pre-registration. It's not like um, a mandatory or it's, it, it will not apply to you to, to, to go to the event. Is just to gather the interest of all those companies uh, uh, interested in attending the event, uh, so we can keep in contact with them. So uh, I think we can. We have. Uh, well, yes, we will put in the chat the the link um, to so you can do that per registration. Although it is also the link there in the in this presentation. 
and we will keep you informed uh, i think the end of this month or the beginning of the next month we will send all of those interested companies in the in the in this event we will send a, a communication uh, with more detail about the the agenda of the conference and that's it uh, we to to all the uh, to all the, these people that have participated in the webinar we will send the the information the presentations uh, really the the we will send an email but the the information we the public information will be uh, shared in our web page in the european sustainable energy cluster partnership for africa web page that it's part of the european cluster collaboration platform uh, it will be uploaded there uh, all these presentations the the recording of the webinar will be there uh, the the just to i just wanted to mention that uh, uh, the the reports uh, really the 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 full reports of the mark uh, of, uh, of the markets uh, are uh, will be available only by demand and only uh, really for the 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 companies that are members of the of the clusters involved in the seca alliance uh, if we received uh, any interest by mail, you can write to me, write uh, to me uh, uh, regarding the, the. If you have interest in the in the um, in the market reports, in the complete market reports, uh, and, and and we can uh, make an arrangement. But uh, at first, at least, it will be only available privately to to our members. Um, and I think that's it. Thank you all uh, for attending the webinar to, to stay until the end. And um, well, uh, we'll be in touch. Please uh, contact us if you have any question. Uh, fulfill the, the pre registration for the event in, in Lille in, in September if you are interested. And um, we'll see you, we'll see you around. In, in Europe or in Africa. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day.